All right, folks, welcome back. So at this point in the videos, I'm just gonna start walking through the steps that it takes to set up this SketchUp model for rendering in SU Podium. I think most of you will already know that the goal with Podium is to take what we see in the SketchUp viewport and produce something that looks a lot more realistic. Uh, so in, in a lot of ways, we're acting like a photographer would. We're composing a nice image and photographing our SketchUp model and then Podium works in the background to make it look photorealistic. And what Podium gives us is a more lifelike sense of illumination and a more accurate depiction of the materials and surfaces in our model. Okay, but for the first demonstration, I wanna show you what Podium gives us automatically. So in this model, I've gone ahead and removed all the lighting. I've taken the material properties off of all the kitchen items, the floor, th these tiles. Uh, and I just wanna show you what happens if I go into the options menu and do some very minimal setup and then press the render button. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here and click the gear icon and that's gonna open the options dialog. And there's just a few things we're gonna take a look at for this first image. Uh, under image format, Podium gives us three different options, PNG, JPEG, and HDR. With PNG, we can check transparent to render with a transparent background. I'd say about 80 or 90% of the time I use PNG for my renders. Um, I never use JPEG because JPEG is compressed, uh, and if I want to compress an image for the web, I can always do that later on in Podium Image Editor or Photoshop. So PNG gives me that uncompressed, high-quality output. There are times when you might want to render to HDR. HDR is a more versatile format. It's similar to, if you're into photography, it's similar to shooting in camera raw, and it just gives you a lot more data to work with during post-processing. But Especially when I'm test rendering, I usually just leave PNG selected. Image save location. By default, model is selected. And what that means is that Podium's gonna save the finished image wherever the model is saved on your hard drive. So if I've got this model saved to my desktop, when Podium finishes a render, it's gonna save the image to my desktop. If I've got my model saved in my documents folder, that's where the image is gonna end up being saved. If you need to set a custom file location for the image to be saved to, click custom, click browse, and then just browse to any folder on your hard drive. But I'm just gonna leave model selected and go from there. Okay, image size options. Now, when viewport is selected, Podium's gonna render exactly what we see in the SketchUp viewport at exactly this pixel resolution. So I don't know off the top of my head what that is, but if I go into file, export, 2D graphic and options, we can see my view size is 1519 by 865. So this is the image size that Podium is gonna save when I render with viewport resolution selected. If I want a different resolution, I can select fixed. Now, if you're using a trial, um, you won't be able to render larger than your SketchUp viewport. That's one of the limitations of the Podium trial, but assuming you have a licensed copy of SU Podium, when you select fixed, you're gonna have this drop down menu with a few preset selections. So if I know I need 1920 by 1080 or 1600 by 900, which are both pretty common file sizes or 4K, um, you can just select from this drop down list. But if you want a custom size, like say I want a perfect square 2000 by 2000, I can just enter that manually. And that's all under the fixed option. Panorama, renders a 360 degree panoramic image of your entire SketchUp scene. So this enables us to upload our model to the Panorama server and basically see a 360 degree interactive presentation of our render. There are a separate set of videos that cover panoramas, so I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And I'm actually just gonna go back to fixed and choose 1920 by 1080 for the sake of this demo. But I do want to mention that image resolution is one of the primary factors in render speed. So the larger this number, the longer it's going to take to render. And keep in mind that if I double this file size, it's actually four times as many pixels. So moving from 1920 by 1080 to 4K resolution could actually quadruple the render time. Um, now, I'm going with 1920 by 1080 just so I have a nice image for the video. But normally, if I was just doing test images in a regular rendering workflow, 
I'd probably bump this way down to something like 1024 by 768 or even 640 by 480 when I'm just trying out different looks. Uh, maybe I want to make sure my textures look okay and my lighting. And then it's only when I'm ready to do a finished image that I would bump it up to like 2048 or 3076. Or most likely I would use a custom resolution depending on what I need. Anyway, my point is that image resolution has a pretty big effect on render time, uh, and so that's important to keep in mind while you're working to make sure you're being efficient with your time. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is come up to the preset dropdown and make sure we have an interior preset selected. So I'm going to grab the interior default preset. Um, whether we choose an interior or exterior preset has to do with the type of SketchUp scene. So as you can see, we are inside a structure, we're inside a kitchen, and so we need an interior preset to make sure that the render is exposed correctly. If you, if I were to choose an exterior preset for this kitchen, the render would end up underexposed. Uh, and similarly, if I were to choose an interior preset for an exterior scene, that render would end up being way too bright. And that's just because the interior and exterior presets have different exposure levels uh, to adjust for the, the different lighting conditions. That's all I'm going to say about presets for right now. I think we're going to need to cover those in a lot more detail in a future video. But for now, just make sure you have interior default selected. Click save, and then we can go ahead and click render. A few things are going to happen. It's going to export the geometry and textures, uh, and then start ray tracing the scene. Um, and I'm just going to pause it, and then I'll show you the result. OK, that render has finished. Now, there are two ways we can view this from inside SketchUp. I could click Show, and that's going to open it in a small little preview window. Or you can click Edit to send it and open it in the Podium Image Editor. But I've actually just got it opened right from my hard drive because I want to show it to you full screen. OK, here's the result. So it's certainly not a finished product, but it's not a bad start considering how little we've actually done so far to configure it for rendering. So even before we started adding or configuring any lights, we're already getting a sense that the space is illuminated. Uh, it's a diffuse, even illumination coming in from the windows. And even though it doesn't necessarily look realistic yet, we're starting to see subtle gradients, um, shadows, are sort of forming here in the corners where the light's not penetrating as much. Um, so all this light that you see in the scene is indirect light from the sky. This is the first major teaching point of this demonstration. The sky in itself is acting like a big ambient light source, just as it would in an overcast day in the real world. So on a, on a completely cloudy day, light from the sun is still going to illuminate the clouds, which in turn are going to illuminate the ground. And some of that light is coming in through these windows and lighting up this interior. So I want to introduce this idea as early as possible because it's not always obvious to someone who's completely new to rendering, but it's, it's actually a pretty important thing to consider when setting up a model. So the result that I'm trying to have you avoid, and we see this a lot actually, is a user will have their design set up in SketchUp, but it's just floating in empty space. So when they go to take a render, the result is overlit, it's bland, and undefined. And that's because this model is being blasted by white light from every direction, from the sky. We get a much better result if we take the sky and environment into account, give the model a backdrop and a ground plane, take a render, and the result is a lot more satisfying. But let's go back to the kitchen model and start talking about the next steps in going from this sort of dull, unfinished kitchen and achieving something a little bit more lively, like the image we showed earlier in the presentation. OK, so we've introduced the idea of the sky as an ambient light source. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the rest of the natural lighting process in SU Podium. So obviously, one of the major things our first image was lacking was any sort of direct light from the sun. and so. The sun is extremely easy to activate and control in Podium because it's built on the tools that you're already used to using. So to turn on the sun, all we need to do is make sure that SketchUp shadows are toggled on. And you can see that if we take a render now, we're already taking steps in the right direction. The sun and shadow angle, as you would expect, is controlled by the SketchUp shadow sliders. So I keep these docked in my toolbar, but they're also over here in the side panel. And if I move the date and time to something closer to morning, like 8 a.m., for example, I have a scene set up. 
And if we take a render at 8 a.m., we're going to get a much different image. Now, you may also notice in that image that the shadow position isn't the only thing that changed. So if I flip over to Photoshop, I've got them both open. And I just want to show you the difference. This is the 8 a.m. render. And if I show the 12.30 p.m. render, you can see that it's a lot cooler and a little bit brighter overall. So something else to understand is that as you change the date and time settings in SketchUp and move throughout the course of the day, the, the overall tone and brightness of the result is going to change depending on the time of day. So this is a morning image, and so we're getting nice warm sunlight, those long soft shadows, closer to noon, it's a little bit brighter and a lot bluer, right? We don't have that, that morning sunlight. Um, the way that the tone of the render changes throughout the course of the day is actually even more apparent in exterior renders. But before I switch to an exterior model, I want to talk about a few more things using this kitchen. Uh, so we're going to focus on intensity and exposure first, and then I'll open up an exterior and we can start discussing uh, the podium physical sky options.